stocks are still crashing down to the lower side. We need to understand where we have resistance, where we have support. We're going to talk about the SP 500. We're going to talk about uh, AMC, as you saw. GameStop hit support. SoFi is at support. Palantir. Oh. Palantir is at support as well. We got PayPal in here, breaking support. Disney's breaking support. We're going to go over much more stocks, so make sure you stay tuned. Nice overview of them. So make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys for being here. Let's get this video over 150 likes, and that is it. AMC needs to break $6.20. If it doesn't break that, I'm not interested in playing it because it's not showing signs that it wants to go up. And you guys know the only way you make money is when if shares go up. And right now, it is not doing that, right? So it needs to break $6.20 still for me to be interested in it. GameStop actually hit the support level yesterday, held support nicely, and then it went back up off of that. You need to see if that support holds or not, or if that resistance level breaks. But if it stays in between these prices, there's nothing you could do because we won't have a clear direction. If we break here, GameStop's going to crash more. If we break the resistance, then that's probably when GameStop will start to see higher prices. But besides then, it's kind of just stuck in these ranges. Palantir stock. Testing support level twice in a row. This is why I say never miss a video. Get that video over 100 likes if you don't see it already. But his support yesterday, his support today, and it tried to get buying pressure off both days. Look, hit it here, stalled. Hit it here, tried to go up, and it's coming right back down. So that support is still activated on Palantir stock right around $16. Now, looking at it, it seems like it just wants to break. The only way I turn shorter, turn bullish again on Palantir is if we break $17.45, which is that resistance area. Once we break that, then I'll turn shorter term bullish. But for right now, I'm pretty much bearish on the market. I think we have a little more uh, downside to go. But that's what I'm looking out for Palantir stock. Let's go to SP500, a stock you should be watching every day you are on the market. You have to know what the SP500 is doing. Also, we did trade today. We did a video call option play for about a 30% gain. You literally could have made over $300 if you put a thousand in that position. Could have paid for your whole year of the membership like that. Okay. So let me check. Yeah, so make sure you join the team. First thing in the description, only $65 a month. Invest in yourself. Fast track your success. We win every week. See for yourself. Of course, nothing guaranteed, but you'll see for yourself. $650 for the year. Afterpay is actually available for elite year and lifetime memberships. Lifetime is $14.99 one-time fee. Also comes with personal training. Then personal training is $6.99 one-time fee. Make sure you join first in the description. Fast track that success. Now, SP500, actually breaking support. Remember I told y'all, s and I'm looking for it to go around 465 to 466 and that seems like that's worth pretty much working, right? So new support, not that clear, but I'm going to put it around 467. So let's bring down this support. And like I said, I am expecting a little more downside, as I've been telling y'all right here. Okay, so still expecting downside. The major resistance is until 477. There's smaller ones in here, but I just think we're going to keep breaking down a little bit lower, at least to like 464, so 465 on SP500, which means I'm pretty much bearish on other stocks as well. So until we get down here, I think we have more downside to go. Once we get down here, then that's going to be a very big area because then we need to see out of this area, is that going to be the next reversal or do we start crashing down? If we crash that, then the market's probably going to get a bigger crash down to the lower side, which you do want to pay attention to. So kind of watch that. SoFi stock is testing that support level, kind of tested as a resistance today. As you can tell, it ran up, test resistance, test resistance, and it came back down. Didn't really want to break it. So I'm going to consider that support broken a little bit, but it did test it again. I would, I would say the major support area is $8. If SoFi breaks $8, that would be a no bueno, and it's going to be very bad, and it's probably going to have a bigger crash down than this, right? Remember I told you all, we already played SoFi. If you're on the team, you know this. We played SoFi in here and then we sold up here. I didn't want to play in here. The only way I wanted to play SoFi again is if it broke $11. It never broke it, so I didn't play it. And having that strategic, that game plan, which is what I teach you in personal training, we just saved ourselves from having this big loss to the downward side. So watch that support. If that breaks, that's going to get very bad. If it can kind of hold and go up, there's not too much you can do within this area here. I would really have for it to break up $11. That's the only way I'll probably like some significant movement of it. AMD stuck at 135 at that support area. Hasn't really broken that in about two days or so. If you zoom out and look at it, you see how it's kind of, it's been stalled at that support level for two days. Notice how that support level is hitting perfect. If you want to learn how to find support levels, make sure you join the team. First thing in the description, but hit that perfect. Hasn't really broken that yet. So I'm going to actually leave support at that area of 135. But remember, Shorter term, we are bearish right now, okay? I believe the market's just going to kind of continue just dropping down lower. Let's go over Bitcoin. Bitcoin tried to get pushed up off that support. Remember, I told y'all we're going to leave that support up there, and we also need some type of breakage out of this area. We finally got that off that support. So that does sense like maybe we might get some bullishness. Also, on January 10th, we might get some news on the spot ETF, so that's going to be a big day. 
So that's basically next week on Wednesday. Be mindful of that because um, Bitcoin might move a lot on that day. But it did go up. Nothing really significant. I do believe Bitcoin will reach 100,000 maybe this year or next year. So I am very bullish on it. But take this level off. Support now where we don't want to break. Oh, hold up. What did I just, what did I just touch? So new support is, I'm going to put it at 42,000. That's our new support level. That is what we do not want to even come back and retest. If we break that 42,000, that's when I believe we'll probably have a bigger down movement on Bitcoin, which is probably going to bring a down movement on the crypto stocks. But as long as we stay above the support, I'm going to just assume that we're going to break around 46,000 as resistance and then go up to about 50,000, which is my target. But I do believe Bitcoin is going to have that push up higher. I just think um, that dip was okay off of like analysts and news, but I think we'll have that push up back up. Okay, so um, I am bullish on that, which brings me to the crypto stocks. Hut, I'm looking to buy Hut. I'm kind of just waiting for a little more confirmation. I'm kind of waiting for Spy to do, drop a little bit, but if you're on the team, you know what we're waiting out for. Hut still has the same support. It almost hit it perfect here. We had a little push up, so that looks good. Riot also held his support here. I went up, so that looks good. I'm still playing. I'm looking to play that one. I'm looking to probably play all three. Mara hit a support too, had some pressure up on the upper side as well. And then Coinbase, all they all kind of hit their supports and they went up off those support areas. So they're all looking kind of good, but we just need a little more confirmation before I try to get in because this was a very big drop and you don't want to get caught in just a normal retracement higher and then it drops again where you could just wait and be a little more strategic, have a little more patience. Okay, so that's what I'm kind of waiting out for on the uh, crypto sector. Let's go to gold. Gold almost tested that support twice, two days in a row. See how it almost hit here perfectly that uh, yesterday and today almost hit perfect again. So support is kind of holding above that $17 range. Just kind of watch that. But I don't think any significant movement is going to come out of gold on the upside until we break 1845. That's when I think it'll really have some push. So that's just some levels I'm kind of watching out for on gold. Let's check the oil. Oil ran up, almost hit resistance level perfect. It went to like 6102. I had a resistance at 6135. Ran up and had big selling pressure today. Look at OXY huge selling pressure this is why i say you got to be very careful because you don't want to be taking these big losses that's why i'd rather wait for it to break that resistance to confirm it wants to go up than just buying just because i believe it might go up or hope in or no we need confirmation came down tested that support level right around 59.35 today broke it but let's see if he retests it tomorrow um yeah i want to see what happens tomorrow on oxy but but right now i'm not looking to get in it because it did starting to break that support and it's testing it it needed to hold up here but it's starting to come back down. So I'm pretty much all the other oil stocks. See, like Chevron's coming down, OXM's coming down. That's why I say you really only have to watch like one OXY and then whatever happens with that, then we'll kind of know. Um, also, Mullen, Mullen's pulling down. Hasn't done much for a couple of days. Remember, it needs to break $16 for me to be interested in it. Carnival Cruise Lines trying to hold support up here. I think there might be another play on it. We already played it. We bought in here. We sold in here. So I'm in no rush. I'm kind of waiting for where I believe that next run will occur. So watch the support. The resistance, I would say, where I would actually feel like buying it if it did break was probably 1950, but we're kind of far from that. So let's see what can kind of hold in here. UAL is the only one I watch for the whole airline sector. So UAL, um, when there's another play on UAL, I might play UAL and I also might play AAL, American Airlines, because they're kind of moving the same a little bit. But UAL just seems to move a little bit better with pricing. But watch that support level. If we start breaking that, that's going to sense a very big crash down on the airline sector. So kind of watch that support on UAL is right around $39. Okay. That's a very crucial level that you want to be watching out for on uh, that one. Neo stock hold, testing that support. Notice how it almost hit perfect today. Almost hit perfect. My support was $8.25 hit here, tried to go up, came back down the low of today. The first low was like eight twenty eight, three cents away from that. And it hit it again here and trying to push up after that, but watch support. I'm not really looking to play Neo until we break back above nine Oh five. Lucid, the same way. We have to break $5 for me to be interested in it. Rivian, the same thing. We have to break all the way back up here to me. Look at this crash down. This is why I say you want to wait for resistance to break, not just test it and then come back down because that's not showing buying pressure and you save yourself from these big losses. Okay, that's what you, you don't want to take big losses. Also, don't forget to join the team. First in the description, only $65 a month. Invest in yourself. Fast Tracker says, I literally been showing y'all winning plays every day this week. We have not lost a play. We haven't lost any place last week either, over 41% gains. Make sure you join. Follow me on Instagram, will.knowledge always to get the followers up. Go like the new, two new posts that I did. Very crucial. But yeah, Rivian, we got to wait for it to kind of reverse out of this range right here. And also um, SQQQ, this is a reversal. This is pushing up. About to hit my target of $15. 
Um, I'll probably update you guys on a new support on this one. Remember I told y'all once it broke that resistance level, that was going to sense that SPY was going to drop and this one's going to push up. And that's exactly what's happening. SQQ is going up. SPY is dropping. Hope you guys enjoy the knowledge. Don't forget to get the video over 150 likes. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Which one else do I have to go over? Meta stock pulling down. It stalled in my support level around 344. So kind of watch Meta. See how it stalled out there for three days? This is why you never want to miss a video. Support is hitting perfect. Let's see what happens. There's nothing to do right now. We had a big drop. Now we have to know, is this drop going to be just a normal retracement down? Or we're going to continue going higher. That's when we'll have our direction. Or are we going to continue going lower, right? These are just normal retracements. And then we're actually going to drop more. So you want to save yourself from a big loss. That's the whole point right now. So have patience and be strategic. Um, a firm broke support. Also, new support, probably around like $40. I think a firm could have a nice swing trade. Now we're just kind of waiting for, for a firm to build that next support area. And that's pretty much it. Very simple. Notice how I don't have any indicators. No, I'm not talking about no patterns. I'm talking about pure price, pure support, pure resistance that I teach you when you join personal training. Make sure you join. But $40, looking for that support area. As we're dropping, we want to see what happens right there with a firm. I think it could still reach up to $55, but we will see. As y'all know, Baba, I'm looking for reversal, but remember, we got to break $78 for that to happen. We haven't done that yet, so I'm waiting. Boeing is pulling down. Watch support around $241. i am looking for a nice swing on a Boeing to reach up to about $300. That's not ready yet, but it's almost at the support level, so maybe tomorrow or maybe next week, you're going to see that support level hit, so be mindful of that. Also, tomorrow, we have big news. We got non-farm unemployment change tomorrow pre-market. Be mindful of that. Tomorrow could be very risky. Maybe don't even trade tomorrow. Again, not financial advice, but it will be risky. Just kind of be mindful of that. Google starting to pull down. Google, I don't really want to trade Google. It's very sideways. It's been kind of sideways since like August. It hasn't done much. Um, but yeah, Google might be something on the higher side to break like all-time highs, but you really have to wait for some significant movement to happen out of here. I'll probably update you guys levels on uh, Google soon. Netflix is pulling down. Watch that support area. We don't want to break that if we want to continue to see higher prices. If we start breaking this, Netflix is going to have a bigger crash down. I will actually play that to the downside if Netflix had that downside movement. I would actually play that. But other than that, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, make sure you guys get the video over 150 likes. Join the team. with the Join the winning team. That's the most important part. Get the knowledge. And always remember, no circumvention of ours. So anything, just for educational purposes only. So do not trade anything you see or hear in the video. I will catch you guys in the next one.